I had spent so much money getting root canals, crowns. If I was having to keep doing that, it was going to be a heck of a lot more than doing this all at once. So when it comes to making those payments, mine was a little bit different. A common concern when considering dental implants is the price. So how do everyday people make it affordable? For myself, I had spent so much money in regards to getting root canals, getting crowns, getting anything that direction. So I'd put in, I don't even know how many tens of thousands of dollars in my mouth. So I was trying to find something that for a long term was going to be a better option. So when you do start searching, you do see different prices. It sort of is overwhelming, but I was trying to figure out what's going to be the best long term versus trying to put band-aids over everything. So yes, it was a shocker at first, but I knew I needed to figure out a way to make it work. Can you talk more about, you know, the other kind of tooth replacement options that might have seemed more affordable? You know, like you said, you got root canals, crowns, extractions, you name it. And why did they not like work out for you? Well, obviously the, the le least expensive ones were always the extractions. To get it out, then you wouldn't have your root canal. Then you wouldn't have to have all of the work done, have it done two parts with the temporary crown, the permanent crown. And I had, I think, eight or 10 different root canals and crowns all over my mouth. And over time, those crowns basically would start either pulling up, your gum was receding, then if you had any viable tooth underneath, those were getting even worse and those teeth were breaking. So no matter how much money I was spending on one single tooth, which was affordable at that time for that one tooth, in the long run, I was spending so much more time and money having to go back in, replace the crown, get it to a point where they could put a new crown on. So it was almost like I was doubling the time and money on one tooth versus it being fixed a couple of years ago because you never know how long that crown's going to last. When I saw the advertisement for Nubia being 24 hours, I'm like, this can't be real. There's no way this is going to happen in 24 hours because I've never seen this happen. So when I did the link to see if I was a candidate, how how many teeth that I lost, all that other stuff. And then I watched the video and I'm like, there's a lot of people doing this. This is a possibility. And then when I was able to physically see how everything was set up, how it was going to look during that consultation, that's what made it easier for me to make that decision because everything else that I had researched was not even close to what Nubia was going to offer. Right. And it's, it's, and it's not like, you know, the day after surgery, you're going to get a temporary denture in your mouth for a while, keep going back to get things fitted till you get your permanent set. You're actually, a day after surgery, getting your permanent zirconia teeth, you know? Um, so you're right. Because when I was talking to people, they're all like, yes, here's your surgery. You'll come back. We're going to give you a temporary. Well, that temporary was be good for two to four weeks. Then you come back and get something for another three to four months. And most everything was between 10 months and a year before I would have my permanent. Wow. And I'm like, I've been in so much pain for all these years. I don't want to be in pain for another year. And are those temporary ones going to snap? Are they going to break? Are they going to look like a Bucky Beaver? Are they going to? I didn't want that. Like I said, I've been called a jigsaw puzzle for too many years. I did not want another year of jigsaw puzzle. I needed something that was going to make my confidence there, make me feel better. And this was also just because of, just not my teeth failing, my health was failing. I needed something because people don't realize when you're missing a tooth, you've got things going on with your mouth that can lead to so many other issues health-wise that you may not be aware of until you have those issues personally. Absolutely. And you were wanting to, you know, get it all done at once, right? Not this back and yeah. forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I could understand why. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. It's like you, you, when you're working, you have to take that much time off of work and things along those lines. <laughs> what happens if you need to be in a, an appointment at a certain time 
and they couldn't get you in. Or you want to go on vacation, but you can't because you've got a temporary, whatever it was. I did my, I'm one of those ones that has to have a list. So I had my pros and cons of every different option that was out there. And I had more, uh, more cons on the other locations and other options than I had with Nubia. It was just, my cons was like, can this really happen? <laughs> Is it going to happen? And that was just, those were just me because I'm like going, this is too good to be true. It's too good to be true. And I am just so happy that I made that call. I decided to put my fear behind me and kept my appointment. So when you were actually in your consultation, you know, you're talking with the small consultant about price. What made you comfortable with like kind of proceeding with like placing your deposit down and, and moving forward with the payments? What made you comfortable enough to proceed with it? I'm a numbers person and people laugh because you either love or hate numbers. I'm one of those weird ones that like numbers. I knew how much I had been spending over the years. And if I was having to keep doing that, it was going to be a heck of a lot more than doing this all at once. So I was looking, yes, it's going to be X amount of dollars. However, I'm able to have these permanent. I know that I don't, I'm not going to worry about another crown failing, doing X, Y, Z to a uh, partial bridge or whatever they wanted me to do. I now have two arches. They're permanent. They're not going anywhere. And I don't have to worry about keep adding money on top of everything because something failed and I had to do it twice. It's done with. I made it work. How everybody does it, that's different opportunities. But talking to them during the consultation, they're like, here, here's one option. You can be cash paying. You could do financing. You could do a variety of different things. So I was looking number wise. And like I said, ultimately it worked to have something permanent and for many, many years to come than a short term solution. So you know up front here is your payment. This is what it's going to cost. And there are no surprises. So it sounds like something that made you feel comfortable jumping in was because they actually gave you a cost guide that was super clear. You knew what to expect. And we actually have that same guide you can download in the description below. Well, I have to ask, you get your teeth. Mm -hmm. When do you start paying for you know, your monthly payments if that's the option you decided? Mine was a little bit different. I did qualify for the financing, um, but I ended up being able to utilize um, some equity in my home. Right. And I went that direction because here in Arizona, the my home value went so crazy over the last six, seven years. I was able to use some of my home equity and did it that way. I'm what? still paying... On a, I'm still paying a monthly payment. I'm still just like financing through Nubia. I would have done it that way, but I was able to do it with my home equity and do the same thing. So when it comes to making those payments, you, it's still a monthly payment and you still have to put that into the budget. So when I was looking at numbers and what have you, you always have those things of the what ifs. Um, maybe you have a, a savings account that is an emergency fund or whatever it was. So what I did is that I started a savings account and that anything that if it was overtime money, if it was money that we were going to utilize um, in our budget the month before, but we didn't need it. Maybe we budgeted X amount of dollars to go to dinner or we didn't do that or we were supposed to go on vacation, but we didn't get to go because somebody got sick. I would take that money I'm putting into that savings account. So I was always putting money into that account. So when the payments were coming up, I would have that money there. I'm a budgeter. Like I said, I'm a numbers girl. So I would look at what is our monthly budget? What do I need for the house? What do I need for internet, water, electricity, whatever it was. And then that would be the opportunity for me to put that extra money in my personal budget into that savings account. But I needed to find ways to also be able to pay for it. Like I said, I had opportunities to do overtime. 
you can do overtime. People have cut out doing the Starbucks. I was a huge, I love smoothies. And I realized that smoothies are not cheap. So I had a, uh, a blender at home. I started making my own smoothies. I would get the vegetable or the fruits and get the ice and the fruits and whatever else I wanted in there and make my smoothies. And that was saving me money every week. So when there's a will, there's a way. And I feel like, you know, it's, it can be a lot of these little things that you tend to not even think about. Like you said, smoothies, right? They could add yeah, up. Very much so. And I'm not a coffee drinker, but I've got friends that go to Starbucks every day. And that adds up real quick. So even if you want a Starbucks once a week, if you're there five days a week, cut out three or four of them. And if they're four, five, six bucks a piece, there's a good 20, 30 bucks that you're saving right there. If you're doing that every single week, there's 120 bucks. I've been fortunate. I work from home. So that gas money, I don't have to pay as much driving my car. So I had set aside money that I would utilize for my gas on a monthly basis. Knowing I, if I had extra money set aside, I would take that money, put it aside into that savings account. Wow. So if you put it down, if you see it visually, and if you budget it that way versus, oh, I'm just going to take this and this, it may not work. Um, something else that I did was every single week, I would take a, a certain dollar amount from my paycheck and put it to that savings account. I started low. And this is going to sound weird to a lot of people, is that every single day, or I started on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I would take anywhere from 10 to $20 from my checking account to put it into my savings account. It was automatic Monday that I just would put into that savings account. Then on my paydays, sometimes I put $25 to $50, put that in the savings account because that was something that would automatically go into that account and it was out of sight, out of mind. Because if you see it in your checking account or your savings account or what have you, you want to spend it. Yep. But I did a conscious effort going, okay, on these three days, I'm going to take this amount of money and I started out small. And then as I was doing overtime, I put in a larger amount. So that money is there for that monthly payment. And I don't feel that that money is coming right out of my checking account because it's set aside. Absolutely. So if you, as I tell people, is that physically put the numbers down. Then you can see it. Because if you try to just run it in your head, you get overwhelmed. Write it down. Write down every single thing that you have to pay, what you think that you use. If it's, like I said, if it's dinner, is it movies? You don't have to give up that stuff. You can still do a movies, but you don't have to do movies two, three times a month if that's what you normally did. Maybe do it once every two months. That will help you save. So there's different ways out there, but it depends on the individual and how they want to look at it and attack it. That is some really, really good advice. And I wish I was as good as... I wish I liked numbers like you. Actually, I do like numbers. I do. But I don't like putting them down. I don't like seeing them. You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> it's scary at first. It is scary at first when, you, when you're not used to it. But once you do it, it becomes second nature. It truly does. Now for You Ask, They Answer. We'll have our guests address specific questions you have about today's topic straight from our Nuvia Smile Maker Club Facebook community. Eva said, can you guys walk me through the consult, are images taken, and is there a cost given? I know there's a lot of questions, so, but can you kind of sum that up? Yeah. Okay. So with the consultation, you go in, they go ahead and take you back to go ahead and get a full mouth scan so they can look at if you've got bone loss. Uh, anything that they need to see, you stand there and it's a machine that goes all the way around your head. There's no pain, no nothing. You just stand still for about a minute. Once that's done, they will go ahead and present that to the doctors and surgeons and make sure everything's good to go. And then at that time, I was able to go meet with the smile consultant and we were able to look at what I would look like with different styles of teeth. And it was an eight and a half by 11 picture had three different styles of exactly what I would look like. And you just sit there and you're sort of in awe. You're like, oh my goodness, I can smile. I can look because when they took that picture of me initially, there was no teeth. But when they present you that picture, it's like, oh my goodness, this is what I can look like in X amount of time frame from 
when I start my consultation to when I get my permanent smile. So what was it like speaking with a consultant and talking about price? So when we sat and talked, we looked at those different options. And there's different things that they have within the Nubia office. So there's different financing and what have you. And I know the ranges um, typically go about 450 to $900. But you need to remember every person is different. Are you doing uppers? Are you doing lowers? Are you doing both? It's very difficult to give one price for every single person because everybody is an individual. Don't forget to download the Dental Implant Cost Guide that will give you clear answers to your common questions about cost.